guys, for today's video, I'm going to tell you all about my obsession for the last 12 or 13 years, using and collecting vintage lenses. So here's the story. For over a decade, I've been collecting manual Canon FD lenses for various reasons. Number one, I used to use them for my 35mm adapters for my old mini DV cameras to get additional depth of field. Number two, I also shoot film on a regular basis so it's nice that I have a full set of glass. And lastly, I also use the 50mm with my anamorphic gear as the taking lens. First, a bit of history. FD lenses were first manufactured by Canon in 1971 until around 1990. So these lenses are old, most likely older than you, most probably older than me. But if you're lucky, you can get them in excellent condition. This mount was the mount before EF took over in the 90s. It's now 2020 and EF's reign will soon end with the introduction of the RF mount for Canon mirrorless cameras. One reminder guys, ever since I shifted from the old traditional video cameras to DSLRs and eventually mirrorless, I was always told by my photographer friends that it's wiser to invest in premium lenses than camera bodies. Bodies will get updated almost on a yearly basis, but good glass will last you for decades. Here's some proof. A 12-year-old 50mm 1.2. An 8-year-old 25mm 0.95 Voigtlander. And a 35-100 to F2 Olympus at 9 years old. So over the years, I've developed a fondness for FD lenses because of their inherent characteristics. Modern lenses have this clean and clinical look loved by many, including myself. But most of the times, that's what the job needs, an accurate representation of what you're shooting, no more, no less. However, on some occasions, you want to go beyond clean, clinical, and sterile. Or maybe you want a more organic, softer feel for the image you're capturing. This is where the vintage lenses come in. Maybe you want the footage dreamy, organic, or unique. Maybe you're after a certain feel or vibe. No two lenses are the same. Every lens is unique and has a personality of its own. As Apple would say, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Maybe it's the way the lens flares, or maybe a subtle haze on the image, or the way the bokeh shapes in the background. But personally, it's the way these lenses render human skin for me absolutely gorgeous. Again, if I'm producing a slick, sharp ad for a hotel, or a beverage, or a product, or perhaps a corporate AVP, I wouldn't use these vintage lenses. If I'm shooting a pre-wedding, or a narrative, or a fashion piece, these lenses would be perfect for the job. Time out. This video is brought to you by Raptor Cases Philippines. This is the 400X, and to this case, I will entrust the safety of my vintage FD lenses. Raptor cases have a three-year warranty on parts and a lifetime warranty on service. It goes without saying that there's no AF on these old lenses. The aperture is also controlled on the lens itself and not on the camera. Over the years, I've collected a ton of adapters so I can use these lenses on different types of cameras. Micro Four Thirds, E-mount for Sony's, Lumix L for my S5, EF for Canon. Think of a mount and you probably have an adapter for it. You don't have to stick with Canon FDs though, as there are a ton of options. 
popular choices include old Soviet lenses like the Helios or the Tacomars from Japan. You can easily start your set with getting the basics, like a 50mm 1.8 or 1.4, and then a 35mm 2.8. Like anything vintage, the general rule is the more rare it is and the better the condition, the more expensive the item. To get you excited, the greatest unicorns are the 85mm 1.2L, the 55mm F1.2, and the 24mm F1.4L. A big part of the fun of collecting vintage lenses is the hunt. You scour eBay, Japanese camera stores, or even Facebook to try to get the best find and best deal possible. This 24mm 1.4L is my current prized possession. I got it for 24,000 pesos or 500 US dollars. What a find! It's like falling in love. I advise you to take it easy and not rush things. Take your time. That's the end of the metaphor. Compare prices and take note of the glass condition. Picking only at least very good to near mint to, of course, mint. Let's hear from some people also hit with a vintage bug. Um, I love how it treats the light coming into the lens. I love the backlight, the backlight aspect of it. Um, it just really makes the whole picture soft and makes it more mysterious and I feel like it just gives the image whether photo or video a bit more character. I like this lens because it's a natural feel. Niya. To be specific, the cool light. It's natural, it's natural, it's not saturated. And the build quality of this, you know, it's pretty good. It's almost pure bakal, yung build. Niya. I use vintage lenses because they're a lot cheaper than the native lenses. Secondly, uh, each vintage lens has this unique characteristic wherein the native lenses just can't replicate. I chose vintage lenses kasi gusto ko yung soft texture ng footage, old film like, and retro style na look na shot. So doon ko nakita yung gusto kong style, gusto kong character ng shoot. Baka nga pag nalaglag mo to sa tiles eh, baka yung tiles pa yung mabasag. Sobrang tibay ng build. That's it for this video. Happy vintage lens hunting.